All right, so Global is about to get the Ragnarok update that JP had over a month ago. Um, as you can see, I play JP, so I'm gonna tell you the character he's gonna probably be get from the summoning banner. Um, you first of all, you got the boy Sigurd, you know, the prince Sigurd, you know, that half demon, half human. It's pretty cool. You also got Ragnarok Lost Vein, decent as well. Um, pretty okay unit. But you also got the Thonar, which is the free unit you get um, from the um, event or Ragnarok update, which is pretty decent because a lot of people has been confused about Thonar and who she is. Um, if you don't know, Thonar has officially been named the female Thor. Um, we can get this from the Grand Cross Twitter, and you can see her bio. Like they gave a bio entry for her, and as you can see, it says. They say she roams from town to town, right and wrongs and helping the common folk. They also say that she wields a hammer that shoots forth lightning. Have you seen her? Have you seen Thonar? So basically you can just tell right now she is the female Thor unless there's someone else I know. Unless there's someone else that also like carries a hammer and shoots forth lightning. But a lot of people are what I've seen from my community post because I post this on my community post. A lot of people are upset about this because you know um, people thought that they would think that they was like a separate character and thrown out with somebody else. But she is that blonde girl that fight face against Eskinor. She was like lighting all that good stuff. Um, you can also tell by the way she looks in the trailer screenshot that I have right here. So we got this one right here. Uh, let me see. Pull up this one right here. You got this one from the trailer. I can see she got these lightning bro lightning bolt eyebrows. And then you also got the blue eyes. And if you pull up to this cutting of Thonar, you can see she has the same type of eyebrows, the blue eyes, look like it's ready to change color. So you can officially say that um, she is the female Thor that you see. I'm assuming that maybe what it is is that she transforms whenever she receives the hammer, whenever you get to that part of the story, because Grand Cross really likes to introduce new units based upon like the story. So whenever she gets our hammer, we'll get that new um female thor transformation with her blonde hair but as right now this is a base form um she pretty much got a sword which is not the fun thing about her she just looks so basic and she like i said before she is the free unit she's pretty good though because she's used for belma ray she's gonna be good for a three turning which i will explain later in the video as i talk about more so of the ragnar characters that you will get from if you do try to summon on this banner so let me know guys your thoughts about her like was you expecting her to be named female thor is this information and like pretty much new for you um i felt like this would be pretty much important to talk about because you know a lot of people was confused on who thornar is and why was she introduced in the ragnarok um beginning update all right so this time we got the free unit thornar you might as well just talk about her since we were just explaining her Basically, she is the free unit that you get also a free UR costume for. And um, you can see the costumes right here that you get for free. Now, there is a paid one as well, which is this one with the armor set. But these are the costumes you're going to probably get for free, which is pretty nice. This is a free one right here, but yeah, it's pretty nice as well. Now, she is the free unit. She pretty much is a PvE type of unit, but she's one of the, I would say, the best free SSR unit that we got in a long time. Just because of her passive, but we're gonna first explain her kit as well, because you know, it might be important for somebody somewhere. Alright, so Thonar has a bleed card, which you know can last two turns and all that good stuff. You can see right here with her debuff. Pretty cool animation. Boom. She also has pretty much, I think it's like what is it called? Um It's like ignore the fence, right? Uh, yeah, it's charge card. So she got a charge card, which is pretty cool as well. You guys can see the animation right here. Boop, boop, boop. Oh my god. And you get to see the ultimate as well, which is a weak point. So she has a bleed card and a weak point, which is pretty decent to have. There you go. Boom. Oh my god. Oh, that's super strength. And slash. Oh my god. She changed the weather on this man. All right, there goes a weak point card as well. Now, the most important thing about her is her passive, which I'll show you guys real quick at the on the screen. Uh, when a debuff is removed by skill uses in deathmatch, 
Increase all allies attack by 40% and attack related stats by 20% for 3 turns. Excluding debuff removal due to unique effects so passives like um, I think Esterosa. So that doesn't count. But as you can see, a lot of people run the Zanary method which is going to be a 3 turn strat to um, clear in Belmont. I'm going to show you an example right there. Right here real quick just so you guys can see. And she can be used in the supposition so you don't even have to build her out. She will never be in the front. You can run her like level 60, level 50, and just throw her in the sub. All you have to do is just activate her passive, which is why I say she's one of the best SR, SSR we got in because, you know, she made it possible for us to clear Belmont Raid pretty fast. All right, so basically we're going to explain the um, three-turn strat with um, Thonar. Um, as you can see, my friend or random has Thonar in the back because her passive works in the sub position. He has, has Zara as well, which pretty much nukes the Belma raid. Zaneri, because Zaneri needs it for the cleanse. And he also got Green Gother for the rank ups. I'm surprised he doesn't have a dinner for Liz, but it's alright. It's alright. You know? I, I got him. I got him. And then I have dinner for Liz, Green Dairy, Gother, and um, Alioni as well. So what I'm going to do is just run attack food. Now, a lot of people think that you need to use some UR gear for your units you don't um as you can see i don't even have your gear on my derriere and i don't even have attack gear on my dinner for list which i'm going to use somebody else uh, i'm gonna use my escanor because it has crit damage and i'm switch over to that and basically we're just going to be doing this um usually i run this in area way but we're gonna try it out with this because um i don't think he has dinner for liz so i'm gonna do that and play with him like he has Zara, so he's probably gonna carry me. But what you really wanna do is you just wanna have double Dana for Liz's to be exact. Just so you'll be able to um have gold cards and spam it. Just so you can build up your ultimate for the final phase. So this strat is pretty easy. Um because this guy has doesn't have Dana for Liz. I'ma hope that he carries me with his Zara. Zara tries. You feel me? He might but you might be asking yourself why am i using a green derriere it's because with green derriere i'll be able to um pretty much um build up my ultimate really um this is pretty much two dps you really want to use is zara trash green derriere and i guess sometimes <laughs> sometimes you, you can use um jericho um, I've used Jericho before, but I've seen that Zara tries. He he just hits so hard, like he hits pretty pretty hard in this um, Bell Mode raid. Usually they are the Alignoni user, but he saw that I wasn't using Zaneri and thought I didn't have Zaneri. <laughs> but like I said before, you want to use double Dana for Liz, so I'm hoping he has a good um, Zara tries. And then he's gonna do this where I spend my gold cards, do that and. Basically, go for double ultimates. Now, a lot of people might think, like, yo, you have to be a whale to beat this or anything like that. No, you really don't. Um, like I said before, Zara Trash really hits hard on his um, raid. <laughs> you can probably see right now, he's probably going to nuke the boss right now. And for now, you can probably can see that I have double ultimates on my boss. Oh, man, he doesn't have that really good Zara Trash. But as you can see, I'm probably going to nuke the boss with multiple ultimates. That's usually what you want to try to do. That's why a lot of people run double down for Liz. So it can build up a lot of ultimates. And a lot of people use Green Derriere because they have the Valentine's um, costume, which can give you a free random costume mat material at the end. So he's going to ult right here. Hopefully he has some gold cards with his Zara Trash. Oh, he's wasted all that. Holy. Good thing I was 606, so I pretty much carry this guy. Yeah, I pretty much carry him because I was 606. But like I said before, you want double down for Liz if you can. Um, obviously I carry this guy pretty hard <laughs> because he didn't have it. So that's also good. As you can see, without me using like um Dana for Liz method as well. Or double Dana for Liz. And as you can see, boom. And then I got the one random Valentine's costume material, which can be used to get a random costume material. That's why a lot of people use Green Day Yeri, just so they can just farm a costume mats as well. But as you can see, there goes the Thornar method. She can be used in sub position and then boom. Easy clear. 
All right, so basically, I'm just gonna be explaining this man's um, costumes. See right here, boom, boom. It's all his costumes. I know a lot of people like to see people costumes. Talk about here, boom, boom, and bow. Now we're gonna go to his kit real quick, so just so you guys can see. All right, so Seeger has an extort card that is AOE. Um, as you can see, um, at the gold card, it's gonna be 300%. Of attack on all allies three turns and it's going to extort 25 percent of their basic stats um it's going to be pretty good so boom look cool bow 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 and then at the bottom you know he got the amplify card now he has his amplify card which is pretty decent as well which you can see real quick boom uh bow and now you get the guys, you guys get to see his ultimate, which is the flood damage single attack card. So there you go, right there. There you go. Ugh. Oh my god, look, you just. Ooh. That sword style. Oh my god, is that a dragon? Bow. Now, Seeger is mostly mainly for um, a somewhat medio this team. Show you this man's pass real quick. Um. Basically, what Seeger is, he's pretty much, uh, he's one of the first hybrid type of, um, race heroes. Because at the start of the allies' turns, for every enemy affected by stat decrease, applies an effect which increases attack stats of all allies by 10% for two turns. So, it will give you, like, a three buff. Um, pretty good for a sub on many of his teams. In addition, the heroes also of demon race affected by uniques and commandments. So, as you can see... This guy is going to be demon slash human as well, which means you're probably going to have to um, use him either on a Percocet Bond team or a someone medio this team. Now, if you want to pair this guy with Green Gother, you're going to need him on the side of with a fairy, um, a goddess, or giant race hero, just because, you know, he counts as both human and demon. So you can't pair a demon with him plus with Green Gother. Or you would never get off Green Gold the passive at all. So keep that in mind, guys, because he is a pretty decent unit, which is very, very good for what I've been seeing, like with Assault Mode Meliodas teams, which is pretty nice. All right, so now we're going to be talking about Ragnarok Lost Vein. Um, pretty much, he is a Lost Vein carbon copy. Pretty much, he has the same stats as Lost Vein, but the bad thing about him is that he's pretty much a support type of Lost Vein, and I will explain the skills cards right now for you. Um, all right, so for his first skill, he pretty much has a taking weight gauge like Merlin, where he can take weight gauge on a single attack card or a single unit. He then can lower the attack related stats of a single attack unit with his um debuff card, which is pretty decent. It's a pretty cool animation, but like I said before, he's pretty much a support type of Lost Vein. Now, he does have the regular Lost Vein ultimate. I think you guys will need an explanation for this one, but I guess I'll show it. You know, he has the regular Lost Vein Ultimate. Nothing special about this ultimate. Pretty same. Pretty much the same thing. Bow. Now, the other thing about him is his passive, which... Now, the new thing about him is his passive, which is at the start of the battle... During the allies turn, increase the hero's ultimate move gauge by the amount of orbs possessed by the hero with the most number of orbs. Now, the amount of orbs can depend on either ally or the enemy. So, I'll, I've been seeing a lot of fun combination where they might run like a Merlin Ult Rush team with Lost Vein. Basically, making him have ultimate first turn. Sometimes, they use Green Elizabeth as well, which also is a pretty, combina pretty cool combination as well to boost up their ultimate pretty fast. But, I really see Ragnarok Lost Vein just because, you know, a lot of people didn't really summon on his on the banner. Just because um, they said he'll be returning, so he'll probably be on another Ragnarok banner or maybe for something else that would be special. But for now, um, he's a pretty cool, fun, ult rush type of unit. But you can just use a regular Lost Vein. It'll be the same thing. He'll be just a CC unit. Alright, so obviously we got to talk about the new Ragnarok story, which I honestly, I really enjoyed at the beginning, you know, introducing the, the character of what, Fenrir. Hopefully I'm saying it right, but you know, the man's actually looked pretty cool. You know, I like the, the color eyes he has. And then I like his little ear ears, you know. 
Reminds me of freaking like Inu Asha, you feel me? That's what I, I see like every time I see. I'll see like a black Inu Asha, you feel me? Um, but we all know, man. I think what was it, like the trailer where he just transformed into like a wolf. Which that remind me of some like Inu Asha mixed with some Twilight or Laura says Sumeru or something like that. <laughs> Yo, whenever I just think of like that man's name, I think of, like when that that grim that um, green gremlin he used to say that man's name. Like he used to just scream that name in like um, Inu Asha. Laura says Sumeru. I'm like, oh my god, man, this like, gave me some PTS vibes. You feel me? Reminds me when like Sakura used to just scream Sasuke name. Sasuke? Like, oh my god. But yeah, we got he has like a basic um introduction. Basically, you know, Nemarbo chose to give this man um, one of the most basic black stereotypes, which is pretty much him, a black kid looking for his dad. You know, his dad went out to go get some milk. You feel me? And never returned. So now he's on the search for looking for his father, which you know, Meliodas, um, got to save this man. You know, got to find his dad. Like he's like freaking, what is it? Child labor support, something like that. And it's all ends like that. So hopefully, you know, the story gets a lot more better, you know, get better plots than him trying to look for his dad, maybe show him like progressing to training into being coming like a pretty much a cool person. Cause I feel like he could be a cool person. You feel me? Um, pretty much. Hopefully he gets like a growth spurt, you know, I feel like he'll be cool if he has something like, you know, like a fur coat, you feel me? Give him like one of those cool things, like with a fur coat, you feel me? Um, cause you know, all the cool characters. They have fur coats, you feel? Alright, so what you will get from clearing, you know, the Ragnarok chapter. It's pretty much a new tavern, as you can see right here. It's pretty spacious. You know, it's pretty huge. You know, you got you got the gang right here, Deanne, King, um, Blonde Goat over here. Um, you got the music boss right there. It's just pretty, pretty huge. You got Bond right now. He gets a custom um food animation as well, I think. Yeah, shows some food right here. He just moves around and just turns like that. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. Instead of him just like cooking food, like chopping stuff up. You know, I got Elizabeth right there, Merlin, Escanor. Um, but if you want to change it back, all you have to do is just talk to Hawk right now and um, go to this icon and then change back to this. And then you get the regular old tavern that you missed. So that's if he wants to keep this type of tavern. You also get the um, new memory tower or something like that. Um, after you clear it, um, you got these three things that you can get. Now this takes a long time to refill, but it takes about, I think it was like 10 hours or something to keep on refilling up or something like that. But basically you can use this as an exchange shop. Um, you can just battle. Usually I just battle whenever I get it up a little bit, like maybe it's like five or seven, just to clear it out. And you get these rewards. Um, you can get some SR pendants, books like this. And on first clear, you obviously get one gem, as you can see right there. Um, but you just get this material right here, these orbs, which you can use in the exchange shop. And what you can get from the exchange shop is pretty decent. You know, you can get some super wicked coins, some hammers, um, SR pendants, you know, some chalices. And it takes, uh, I think it resets like every week or something like that. Mine's at five days, 14 hours. So I think it's about a week or something, something like that. Um, which is pretty decent because, you know, it's free materials that all you have to do is just grind for it. Um, it just takes a long time to refill. So keep that in mind, guys. So might as well explain the updates that I didn't really talk about. Um, pretty much you get the um, free gems. Pretty much all it's going to be is just like you um, listening to... Um, this guy's tail. I forgot his name, but you're going to be listening to his tail and you get one free gem. Um, it's not that many gems you get from it. I think it's about like maybe like 10 or something like that. I know it's a low amount, but yeah, that's pretty decent as well. Um, I already talked about you clearing the tavern and being able to um talk to Hawk to get the new tavern and all this good stuff. Um, you get the, the tower as well. Memory of Earth. All right, so we got a Ragnarok special pickup banner. Um, it's going to be Seeger, Thurnar, Ragnarok Lost Vein for 0.5%. And you have 0.125% each for 
the rest of the units, which is going to be Green Friday, Deanne, Blue Demon, Meliodas, Red Small King, Blue Merlin, Green Escarmor, Red Astrosa, Blue Zelders, Blue Droll, Green Dairy, Sario, Dosiel, Tarmio, and Green Arthur. And the model system, the usual pick for three new heroes. I think it's like, like 600. And new heroes will be added to the race draw after the event period. So as you can see right there, these units will be entered into the race draw. And it will also come back um, probably on the next Ragnarok update. So you probably don't have to summon for this banner as well if you don't want to. But these are some pretty cool units like Sigur and Ragnarok Lost Fame because you do get Thonar for free. But this banner isn't the best unless you like maybe free to play and you were looking for Sario, Ludociel, and Tarmiel, and maybe some commandments. But other than that, you don't really want to summon on this banner because none of these units are meta breaking, but these are pretty cool units to use in PvP. Alright, so hopefully you guys enjoyed me explaining the Ragnarok update that you will be getting on Global tonight. Now, hopefully this helps you out. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if this did help you out, gave you some new information. And this is really guys, and I'm out guys. Peace.